can it be affected? The carnal mind, on the other hand, if allowed to do so, will take the life directly into bondage because it operates off the emotions, which are totally subjective. The spiritual mind operates off of revelation knowledge, which is based on objectivity, truth. Truth is always, 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 always objective. Truth will tell you things as they are, not as they appear to be. And therefore, the spiritual mind, which is grounded in truth, will always seek that which is totally objective. It will not allow itself to go into bondage. People backslide because they gravitate away from the spiritual liberty that they have. So the Galatians, the third chapter. Verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, <clears throat> in the liberty, freedom, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, in order to remain free, you have to fight. As simple as that, because the enemy is not going to rest. The enemy is going to consistently try to spot an opening in which he can bring you down to a lower level and then influence what he wants to influence into your thought stream and into your life. <clears throat> so as Christians, the scripture is consistently telling us, number one, to be alert, test all things, prove all things. Never settle but maintain a standard and never compromise that standard. <clears throat> the biggest enemy that we have is ourselves because your, your thoughts and your emotions which operate in subjectivity gravitate towards just having themselves fulfilled in the moment. <clears throat> but the spiritual mind is uh, the sentinel which will guard the life, protect the life, and maintain the liberty that Christ has initially given us. Turn to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 6 to 11. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. What is he saying? <clears throat> Listening to men will lead you to destruction. Uh, the majority of the body of Christ is going to lose out because it's listening to the wrong voice. And you have warning after warning after warning. The same warning. Um, keep your finger in Genesis and uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Turn over to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verses 3 to 4. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So they're asking him, Well, how are we going to know when it's close to the time of your coming? The first thing that Jesus said in verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. The same thing Paul was saying, I can turn back to, go, uh, to Ephesians. Go 
fifth chapter, starting in verse six. Let no man deceive you with vain words, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The scripture consistently tells us that the body of Christ can be drawn away by listening to people whose words sound right. They're going to be deceived by a number of different methods of people speaking deception. Verse 7, Be ye therefore part be not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. In other words, you were sometimes in darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodly, goodness, and righteousness, and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful, unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So, the spirit that's operating in liberty understands that establishing relationships with those things that are outside of a relationship in light is going to prove unfruitful. And in that respect, the Holy Spirit keeps us on the alert. <clears throat> now turn to Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses fifteen to seventeen. neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. In other words, he's saying <coughs> the only thing that matters is being a new creation. Circumcision and all the, 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 the trappings of functional religion don't mean a thing. What is important is being a new creation progressing toward the finished product. Anything beyond that is going to be unprofitable. Verse 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, <clears throat> peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. In other words, he's saying, <clears throat> I'm, I'm serving notice on all the false teachers all the false apostles all the false prophets don't bother me I'm progressing toward the finish line when he talks about I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus he's talking about he's focusing on participating in the sufferings of Christ to the finish point so he's talking about his focus is fixed he could care less about the influences of men, what they say about him, what they do, it won't make him a bit of difference. The only way that they can get rid of him is to kill him. <clears throat> this is what he's writing to the Galatians. In Christ, we find that God has us progressing toward a goal. We did a lesson on this a couple of days ago. And that goal is that we're on a time schedule. <clears throat> we have to achieve a certain series of maturity steps to prepare us for the time of the rapture. The rapture is not a, a, a thing where you're going to suddenly be taken up to heaven. Yeah, that's true. But <clears throat> the feet won't leave the ground unless there is a change. We are changed first and then we're taken up. No change, no ascension. <clears throat> no progression to prepare for the change if the change doesn't take place. God has each one of us in an individual progression because each one is a unique creation. 
Holy Spirit functions in each life uniquely, bringing that life into what it needs to prepare itself for the final change. <clears throat> the rapture is merely the final change in a series of changes. And each change matures us, prepares us for the final change. If a person stops his progression or slows his progression down, he's just not going to be ready when the X, Y axis crosses. It's as simple as that. God is in motion. God is not waiting for anybody. God put his plan in in eternity. Jesus said the Father had picked a day and an hour in which these things are going to happen. So it's already set in motion. What we're doing is progressing toward it. In line, in tandem, with the move of the Holy Spirit. So what you're going to have is <clears throat> X number of people who arrive at that point and those people will all experience the same change. Uh, turn to Romans, the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter picking it up verses 16 to 17 Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be glorified to Together. We have to experience the sufferings of Christ in the way in which the Father has designed us to experience them. And when we do, it says we will be glorified together. In other words, those, those people that have completed the course, that X day, they're all going to be glorified simultaneously. Those that haven't, well, yeah, as simple as that. So we want to progress with the move of the Holy Spirit. And you find it's very easy to fall out of progression. I see people who have been so far behind that they have they've lost all sense of direction. Because the enemy has been allowed to put things in their life that have blinded them. Uh, left them in obscurity as to whether or even they're on, even on a path in any particular direction. That's his job. That's what he wants to do. That's his game plan. <clears throat> Our goal is to make ourselves available to be changed to the finished product that God designed us to be changed to in eternity at the time in which we've got to be ready. And, uh, it's not easy. But, the Father says, if we determine that that's what we're going to do, God will give us the ability to complete our course. That's a promise from Him. He'll be with us every step of the way. He will guide us, minister to us, reward us, bless us. He will bring us to that point at which life itself takes second place to our progression in Christ. The decision of making ourselves available means that we are willing to put down everything to achieve that one thing. the readiness for the change. Paul illustrates that in uh, all the, most of the apostles illustrated it by just willing to lay down their lives rather than compromise. They could have lived, but they realized what they would have lost. So they preferred to have <coughs> laid it all down and received what the Lord did was calling them to receive. And the same, the same choice is ours. God doesn't force anybody to do anything. He just gives us the opportunity. When we realize this golden opportunity, this once in an eternity, a 
opportunity. It's more valuable than anything else.